Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. This week, I want to show you a trick I learned in a webinar on how to make data limiting by expression more efficient. Unfortunately, I didn't write down whose webinar it was, otherwise I would give credit. I took some notes when I watched it, but I didn't actually start using this tactic until recently, where I was just sort of overwhelmed by the amount of data limiting by expression that I had put into my projects, and I needed to kind of get it under control. And that's why I started using this particular hack more often and why I'm writing about it now. What I'm going to show you is how to use document properties to control data limiting by expression in multiple visualizations. Now, that may sound like a lot of gibberish, but I promise it's worth your time. What I'm going to show you is really going to blow your mind. Data limiting with expression is my go-to method for data limiting because it offers the most flexibility. I can limit data in every single visualization if I want to. And in case you're not familiar with data limiting by expression, it's found in the properties dialog in the data tab under limit data using expression. And I have a post written on limiting data with expression that you can find on my website. Now, the big downside of this method is that you have to configure data limiting one visualization at a time, and if you decide you want to change it, you also have to go through and change them one at a time. Or at least that was what I thought before I learned this trick. It turns out you can use document properties in data limiting expressions. And by using document properties, you can apply the same document property to multiple visualizations. Let me show you an example. So in this project, you can see that I have several pages of data. And I have a, a column in my data set called pdate that's a date time column. And my data set is currently spanning 2018 to 2020 data. Now, for some of these visualizations, I want to limit what's shown to the current year. And so the first thing I need to do is figure out my data limiting expression. And that's what I have here in this annotation. And so I want to limit my visualization to the current year. So I want my P date year to equal the date time now year. That's my expression. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. And then we're going to go to document properties, properties tab. I'm going to click new. Oh, too soon. I'm going to name my property. Let's call it current year data limiting. It's going to be a string data type. And I'm just going to paste that expression in there. Oh, apparently I've already done this. I'm going to edit the one that I've already created. And I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. And now to apply this data limiting, I'm going to go into each visualization where I want it to take effect. And the document property will be in this section here, available properties for column. My current year. There it is. And I will click insert properties and click OK. And once I click out of the dialog, you can see that my visualization has updated to the current year. So if I want to apply this in other places, I just need to go into those visualizations and add the document property. And let's say that my data limiting changes. All I have to do is go into document properties, properties, and click edit. And then I update my expression in one place. And any place that this property is used, the data limiting is updated. This has been super helpful in a number of my projects. Uh, so helpful, in fact, actually, I'll show you a, a real example. Here's another project that I'm working on. And I've actually created this key. And so you can see that I've written down the table, the property name, the data limiting expression, and as you can see, I have more than one property for each table. And this is just a handy little reference that helps me know exactly what I've limited where. And that is my tip for this week. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and share this on LinkedIn. Thank you.